Science and Technology Government of India. His area of work include information technology and knowledge management and also focuses on compliance and partnership building for the organization. He has been involved in various incubation initiatives, wise business um, development, market research, commercialization, and investment aspect of innovation-based enterprises, and also focus on the technology infrastructure required to enable the same. Mr. Tasha Gag graduated from computer engineer in terms of qualification prior to serving at National Innovation Foundation. Mr. Tasha Gag has also served Goldman such and call for nearly 8.5 years across three different divisions, wise asset management, operation, and technology, and position himself as one of the most uh, versatile professional at the state international firm. His area of interest include incubation and promotion of grassroots innovation by way of value addition, intellectual property protection, business development, commercialization, and social diffusion, public procurement, attracting financing for startup, and a study into what are essential determine of failure or success of startup and the broader enterprise. So now I would like to invite Mr. Tasha Gax to provide his uh, presentation on the topic of the significance of policy and law in building innovation ecosystem. Please welcome. Thank you so much for the warm introduction and uh, I welcome you all to this session today and uh, what we are going to do over the next uh, few hours is we are going to focus on the, the dimensions of how grassroots innovation cooperation can be better between India and ASEAN member states and to begin with what I have done is I have chosen a very non-conventional topic which is significance of laws and policies. Usually we keep policies ahead of laws, but I think it is equally important to understand the laws so as to better implement the policies and so that at later stages policies do not get a half-hearted attention because any policy has to be in compliance with law of the land. So that's the reason when we think about policies, we should also think about laws simultaneously. Now. Since we're talking about laws, and especially in today's context, technologies are having a lot of evolving laws across the world. So if I ask a question, uh, if I say a few corporations' name, you have to tell me, and you can raise hand, and the mic will come to you, what is common between all of them? So the first corporation is Google, but an also called Alphabet, that's the parent company. Facebook, Apple, Amazon. So any, anybody wants to say what is common between all these companies? Any hands? It, I think it's a very easy question. So please can we have some hands? Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Apple. What is common between these companies? Please speak up. Yeah. Right, technology and innovation. Anybody else want to attempt? It's a very easy question. We should get a lot of answers. Now, but nobody should say technology and innovation because that has already been said. So, anybody else want to make a guess? Yes, please. Uh, big data. Sorry? Uh, big data. Big data. Big data, yes, okay. Big data, that's also correct. 
that last one, anybody wants to make a third attempt on, now nobody should say big data, and nobody should say technology and innovation. Anybody want to make a guess? Sorry? From the US, okay. So yes, all of all the three are correct. Uh, they are all from US. They are all focused on technology and innovation, and they also have big data as a part of their uh, offerings to the market and uh, as a part of their processes. But if I say they have one more thing in common, and that common aspect is all of them at this moment are being scrutinized a lot and having some kind of cases against them. Isn't it? So if you see the antitrust laws in US, in UK, European Union, all these companies have one more thing in common. They have some cases against them. And the cases are such that whenever there is a fine, it is not in millions, it is always in billions. So because they are big companies, big tech, so the fines are also big, they are always in billions. So when we will talk about laws, a question comes to our mind, when they are such technology-wise advanced companies, they have hire the best talents, where do they go wrong? That they have cases against them. They might be doing something incorrect. That is why governments in several countries would have chosen to put kind, some kind of cases against them. So definitely they might be doing something incorrect, at least from government's point of view. So, or it may be that they are not in having bad intentions, but probably the nature of their business is such that it, it causes certain kind of troubles for them. Okay, so the, say for example, Google. What kind of cases are there against Google? Anybody wants to make a guess? What kind of cases are there against Google? Okay, it could be preferential search. Like if, a key, if you type a keyword, rather than showing a very honest, genuine result, Google might show you something which is called sponsored result or a result that Google wants to show you uh, for some reason. When you talk about Facebook, it might be using your data to present you a lot of options which translate into marketing opportunities for companies, isn't it? Is that something which it is doing genuinely or there is some technology intervention around it which is allowing it to misuse that data? That could be one reason why Facebook is under trouble. Apple is in trouble for very different reasons. Like in case in European Union, one of the cases against Apple was that when it launches a new operating system, it slows down a previous operating system so that you have a temptation to buy a new iPhone. Now that is also something which is uh, considered unethical business practice. Likewise, Amazon have a sanctions against, have some cases against it, in particularly in US. The reason for that is when it shows you a list of sellers, it provides preferential treatment to certain sellers and especially when it is selling the same thing itself. So in a nutshell, as a part of their processes, as a part of their interaction with the users, there are certain steps which intentions are good, but they are designed in such a way that they are the revenue opportunities for the company and the company has no other option than to, uh, than to choose that particular model so as to make revenues for itself. Now, there is a, all these companies are having a department which is called public policy, government affairs, and the task of those departments is usually to liaise with the government on legislative proposals and to contribute to the emerging regulations in those countries. Regulation per se is not bad because if you see regulations, their main idea is to facilitate things. Normally, dictionary meaning would be to interrupt things, but that is not true because if you see all the progressive countries of the world, like US, India, and many other countries of the world, regulations are always designed in such a way so that it can boost the innovation ecosystem of that particular country. 
let me give you an example in this part of the world we have aggregators like grab which delivers you food in india we have similar organize similar startups like zomato swiggy or uber is universal ola is also there in certain south asian countries so these are the companies which in, which employ lot of people lot of people who are not direct employees of the company but they are called gig workers majority of the countries of the world do not have regulations around gig workers now this is something where regulation is catching up technology came first regulations came later on and that is one reason why most of these companies get into trouble because they are so innovative their pace of operation is so fast technology wise they are so much upgrading themselves every hour that the countries and the regulated regulations around those particular offerings are not able to catch up at the same pace so this is one reason why most of these companies are facing tough time but having said that there is no denying the fact that all these companies have been very innovative and that's the reason whether we like it or not we are users of their products several times a day this brings me to another another question like why uh, or how do we build the ecosystem of a country apart from regulations what else the country needs to do so as to build an innovation ecosystem the most important dimension of that is human resources now human resources can be something which we think about coming from a formal sector or in case of grassroots innovators the people are not formally educated but out of their wisdom they are doing lot of innovations when we talk about people it's very important to understand that how the people are actually evolving themselves there is a very very new theory which has come which is called permission paradox not sure whether you have heard about it but what permission paradox means is you need experience to get a job but you don't need a job to get experience okay you need experience to get a job but you don't need a job to get an experience so for example if i am passionate about something not necessarily that i should have a job for it i can do it as a part of my free time leverage it and build my capabilities in it and that is something which university is called permission paradox and that's how most of the people are becoming proficient in new technologies because the kind of technology pace at the moment is such that not everything can be learned from university so there is a school self learning school for everyone after passing out from the institute this is i am saying this because there are a lot of students here so for all of you the education or learning or upgradation of skills doesn't stop when you pass out of college it actually begins when you pass out of the college because that's where you have to compete with everybody else so that you can sustain the fast ecosystem the fast uh, environment and you can find a place for yourself so for human resources it is very important that there is a lot of focus in every country on learning opportunities and this forum is one such learning opportunity say for example when we talk about innovation ecosystem not in general you wouldn't hear about laws but it is forums like this which give you an opportunity to hear about them today we'll have lot of other panelists who will be walking us through what are the best practices in their countries and we'll get to know what is some what is that which others have done before us and what is that we need to do or we shouldn't be do say popularly it is said there are two kind of things which come before us things which we could do versus things which we should do so when we are making the distinction things we could do versus things which we should do that will come only when we will learn from the experiences of each other so that is precisely what this forum is all about because it tells you about what india has done in the field of grassroots innovation it also tells you about what asian member states have done in the field of grassroots innovation not everything would have been perfect some would be failures 
but failure is an you know is one of the important ingredients of innovation probably in india you would have seen more failures but that could be one reason why it has become the third largest ecosystem for startups in the world so failing is not bad failing is important because that is the building block and if you see the ratio of failures versus success in UK, China, US, India, Germany, you will find that most of the people have attempted a lot. Because they attempted a lot, they have failed a lot. Let me bring another dimension as for the remaining time that we have. How do we define innovation or invention in general? Like, or how that can be a very important dimension for society? Few years back in India, there was a case in Supreme Court which is the highest constitutional judiciary in the country, by a company called Novartis, wherein it had a drug and it has applied a patent for it. It already had a patent for that drug, but when it applied for re-patent, it got rejected. So the company went to Supreme Court that my patent got rejected and it should be accepted, this is not right. Then the question that Supreme Court asked was, for your drug, whether there are changes to molecules or are there changes to only crystalline structure? If the changes are only to crystalline structure, it is not invention. If there are changes to molecules, then it is, can be considered for invention. And the Supreme Court has applied something called not obvious test. So it's called not obvious test, which means invention is something which should not be obvious to a person skilled in that art. Invention is something which is not obvious to a person skilled in that art. Let us read it backward. You need a person who is skilled in that art, and that person should say, what I'm seeing is not obvious to me. That is when you can say that, OK, something different has come, because this comment or observation has come from somebody who is a person skilled in that art. So this is how, in India, the rules of innovation are, uh, like the standards are very high, not exactly the rules, but the standards are very high that a very reputed company, when it applies for patent, is also answerable what exactly is the differential element it is bringing forth. Whether the patients get any value added or not, if molecules are not changing and your tablet size is changing, that doesn't add any value, or the tablet shape is changing, that doesn't add any value to the patient. So we have also to be conscious about the standards in which we operate, and that, is, that brings me to the introduction of the policies. So for policy formulation, governments of every country are the one who are entrusted with this, those responsibilities, but there have to be certain policies which have to be bespoke customized policies, which, which are important for that country. So what would have worked for US may not necessarily work for India. What has worked for India may not necessarily work for this part of the world. So, but for that to do, when we are making a policy, we need to be aware what is the best practice that has been adopted in different parts of the world so that when we frame our own policy, we can make it in such a way that it can be well accepted by the, by the people. Because if people are not accepting the policy, people not, are not very happy with the policy, that policy will never be successful. So people's participation is very, very important. In India, uh, especially our organization, NIF, National Innovation Foundation, it works completely on grassroots innovations support model and student innovations. And these are two unattended segments in every country. Especially a few years back, these were unattended. People were not able to believe that students can also come up with the innovation or people at the grassroots can come up with the innovation. But at this moment, the grassroots innovators in India are competing in a very independent manner with the formal sector. There have been a lot of competitions, a lot of award functions, where the participants were from the industries like machine learning, um, IoT, healthcare, energy. But the grassroots innovators in India have competed with them and emerged as winners. So this brings me to my final point, which is that there is a merit in everything. 
we need the right eyes, the right attitude to see the positives in it. And at the same time, we have to be very conscious of the rules and regulations. Recently, there was a, there was a company in the US which claimed that with a drop of blood, several blood tests can be done. And it was called Tyrannus. And its founder, Elizabeth Holmes, had been recently uh, jailed for, I, for several years. So while we see that, OK, a lot of innovations have to come, but they should also pass the test of times. They should have proper validation around them. Otherwise, in countries where regulations are strong, especially with uh, themes like health, it can be very difficult for those people to, to prove that. And if they are not able to prove, investors are, uh, of course, going to sue them. So with this, uh, now I will conclude my talk. Anybody have any questions, happy to take them. Okay, questions will be at the last. Okay, so then uh, that's all from my side. Thank you so much for listening very patiently. And uh, any questions, we'll take them towards the end. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Tasha Agat. So uh, for the next session, we will uh, invite all uh, uh, the panelists for the presentation. And Tasha will also be the moderator. So I will hand over the session to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much once again. So now uh, we are going to have this, the part, this part of the session wherein we have four different panelists from four countries. And they are going to talk about the best practices, what they do best. And now I would like to invite Dr. Diksha Katyal from India. Dr. Vin from Myanmar. Dr. Fong Thai Lee from Vietnam. And from the host country, Cambodia, Dr. Trai Sofel. So Dr. Diksha, Dr. Win, Dr. Fong, from Vietnam and Dr. Tri from Cambodia, India, Myanmar, Vietnam, and Cambodia. Okay. So the format we are going to keep for today's session is, first I will do an introduction. I'll read out their bios so that they know, you know what, are, what is their expertise. So also you know in which area you should ask them questions, which I am not seeing enough. So I think we have to ask some questions. That is very important. And uh, also, if some students want to come to the front row, uh, you are more than welcome to do that, because that way we can hear you more easily. After the bios, we'll have four presentations from each one of the panelists today. And after that, finally, we will have a discussion. In between this, we will also have a coffee break, I think. So during coffee break, form up your questions, OK? In the end, we want you to ask so many questions, because that is what makes a session rich. That is what gets the session some outcome. Especially post-lunch sessions, it is very difficult to do that. And we don't want this session to be just monologue. We want this session to become a dialogue. So for that, we want some, some of you to ask questions, so please listen very patiently, OK? We don't have any prizes so for questions, but we will certainly appreciate your effort if you ask a question. So I'll read out the bios now. Dr. Diksha Katyal from India. She is an associate professor with Guru Gobind Singh in the University, Delhi. 
Her research domain covers various facets of environmental science and engineering, wherein she has published 30 high-impact factor general publications, five books, and has developed three ICT modules under the flagship of EPG Patshala. She has been an Erasmus Mundus Academic Fellow funded under the consortium grant Namaste at Uppsala University, Sweden. For her pioneering research, she has received appreciation from the Honorable Prime Minister and various awards like Water Leadership Award by ET and Ascent, Aqua Foundation Excellence Award in the category Women in Water, Service Excellence Award from Rotary Club of Capital City, New Delhi, and Outstanding Women in Science by Venus Women International Board. She is also a member of various committees on national and international repute like BIS, Women in Science and Engineering India, International Water Association, MIF, and EDSIL. In administrative capacity, she has been the Associate Director at the Office of International, International Affairs of the University and Coordinator of Doctoral Program of the School. Very warm welcome to you, Dr. Diksha. Now let me come to Dr. Fu Win. She is currently working as the Director General at the Department of Research and Innovation and also worked at Mandalay Technological University, Department of Metallurgical Research Development Center, MRDC, Nanotechnology Research De Department, National Analytical Laboratory. She's also received her PhD in Engineering Chemistry 2001 from Yangyang Technological University. She was honored as the Research Fellow of UNESCO, Japan Ministry of Education, Culture, Sport, Science and Technology at Tokyo Institute of Technology for one year, 2000 to 2001. She was awarded Medal of Excellence in Technology by the Government of Republic of Union of Myanmar for outstanding research and development in 2008. Her research area is on water treatment, material science and nanomaterials, and food processing areas. She published more than 40 peer-reviewed journal articles and conference papers and reviewed more than 50 papers for international conferences on science and engineering on bioeconomy. Since 2018, she has been designated as technical consultant to micro, small, and medium enterprises by the Central MSME Department agency and has been working together with MSMEs for national socio-economic development in Myanmar. Warm welcome to you, Dr. Wynn. The next panelist we have is Dr. Fong Thai Lee from Vietnam. He is a lecturer and also the Dean of Faculty of Business Administration, Foreign Trade University, Vietnam. He gained his Bachelor in International Economics, Foreign Trade University and MBA from the University of Wales, UK. Since he dedicates to teaching, he comes to U Leeds University Business School to complete his PhD in international business with the research title of The Role of Intra and Inter-Industry FDI Spillovers in Explaining Performance Outcomes. Evidence from the UK. He offers few courses in business and management such as entrepreneurship and innovation, strategic management, international business, quality management, principles of management, and leadership and management. He is the author of many articles published in highly ranked international journals and the referee of several journals domestically and internationally. He is keen on bringing real-world practices to the academic world, bridging the gap between theory and business practices. As consequences, he acts as a consultant, helping firms in improving their performance. Warm welcome to you, Dr. Thaili. Finally, from the host country, we have Dr. Thai Sofal. He is currently a Deputy Director General for, Gen for General Department of Science, Technology and Innovation in the Ministry of Industry, Science, Technology and Innovation, MISTI. He has an engineer degree in food science and technology from Institute of Technology of Cambodia, a master degree in setting up of food quality and safety from INPT ENSET France, and a PhD degree in agri food biotechnology from UBFC Agro Sub Dijon France. He gets his experience 
as a researcher and project manager for nine years and currently from 2020 in policy development and implementation, particularly in science, technology and innovation. Dr. Trai is the national ASEAN Costi Focal Point of Cambodia and also the national Stephen UNESCO Point for Focus for Cambodia. Welcome to you, Dr. Trai. So now we begin with the presentation and I invite Dr. Diksha to deliver her presentation. Am I audible? At the end? Oh, good. I uh, am Deeksha and uh, I teach. So had this been a small class, I would have made sure this mic would have gone away and I would have just addressed you people the way I normally do all my, to all my students. So uh, since in the morning I saw you people and uh, you were the ones who had to listen. That too, after lunch, I made sure that the presentation that I keep is very, very small. I made it, I changed it altogether and prepared it only for you people, right? So what I would do is just 15 minutes of your, no, 12 minutes of your undivided attention. Can I ask for that? Would you give me undivided attention without seeing into your phone or laptop? Can, can I just ask for 10 minutes of yours? Thank you so much. Thank you. And you people are youngsters, you know. So you have to have that zeal. We are asking you to innovate, but you are not even responding. I understand. English probably, you know, a lot of you feel they speak so fast. So I would try to speak slowly. Now can I expect a yes from all of you? So all of you are going to say yes with enthusiasm. Yes, we are going to participate. Say yes. yes. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. So let's just start with my topic. As I told you, my name is uh, Diksha and uh, I teach in a university in uh, India which is based in Delhi. That university is called as Guru Gobind Singh Indraprastha University, a long name. But still, uh, I'll just shorten it for you. It's called GGS IPU. And I teach in environment department. Now, like you people, someday I was sitting onto that side and I was wondering what, 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 what do these people come over and talk, you know? They just come and talk and talk and talk and we are not able to understand anything. So I've just covered my journey, how I got into innovation, and probably you might be able to relate to it slightly. Shall we start? See again, no, yes. Yes. All right, next slide, please. <laughs> All right, so in the morning, we, it was said that uh, AS ASEAN has not been able to do much when it comes to innovation, but I disagree a little bit. ASEAN has been working towards innovation and especially grassroots innovation. What do we mean by grassroots innovation? Grassroots that means something that comes from generally the origin of how your civilization or how your heritage and culture has been built up. So ASEAN in its uh, 30, on 13th of November, that means around five years back during the same time, ASEAN did adopt a declaration on innovation which was adopted in Manila and it had got three tasks that were allocated to it. First was that the ministries had to continue with the efforts for the future implementation of SCI. Then it directed all relevant ASEAN sectoral bodies to implement and review as appropriate 
to have an understanding of the declaration to maintain that all of us cooperate together and you know reach onto the challenges and opportunities which are there with specific economies and societies the good thing about asia pacific region is that we have you know had origins of the same kind so we have related uh, climate we have uh, culture wherein you know we are able to somehow relate to each other that is the beauty of this area and i'm telling you i can write it for you times are coming over when east is going to you know change over the whole structure of the world we all of us you know me you we have to work towards that day when we make sure that it is the east which governs all the policies that are controlling over this world and these three things were very critical in identifying how it is that we are going to bring in innovation okay. one thing that i could characteristically make out and uh, uh, you know identify which was important in this declaration was to stimulate innovation literacy as well as continuous development of science technology engineering and uh, mathematics which is stem and icd based technologies which are generic specialist and complementary skills to equip the workforce with the skills and competencies so basically what we are saying is see how is it that when when i'm saying east has to you know come up we have to identify ways wherein we can compete with the west how do we do that we have to look into areas which are working towards ict driven technologies or stem as i identified you know the science technology engineering and mathematics these are very critical components that will help you to understand you know what is going to be there in the future unless and until you start putting in your energies into it you might not be able to you know differentiate yourselves from others so this is one area which all of us feel that this this is the only upcoming area wherein lot of energy needs to be put if east somehow wants itself to be recognized yeah so um, nif uh, the national innovation foundation which you've heard of you know since morning has identified various areas of various countries which you know at their grassroots level which we can work upon and bring out in great detail these areas will be the one you know which where an investment of energy time money can be done over and i i'll provide you with the link of this particular um, you know uh, 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 the data that has been given over and you can just read it for cambodia what they have done is uh, they have identified the economy crops the industries so uh, they've given an overview of what it is like the crops that you people are having and the industries and in individually see that is what i wanted you to you know look upon the herbal toys and the pepper thresher and dryer was something that i found very unique about cambodia so these herbal toys that you're making they have been made from lacquer which you know slowly is going away that art is going away from cambodia so at, at this this was this data was provided in i think 2018 so at that time 100 lacquer artists were identified i'm sure much more have been identified now and it is important that more of investment you know this has been what has been derived from your heritage so more investment into this area probably pepper thresher and dryer you know while your uh, pepper has been identified as a geographical indicator you know it is a gi tag that has been given over to you do you know what gi tag is any one of you anybody okay let's leave it for the time being <clears throat> so while this pepper has been given over uh, has been given over gi that means your area will be identified by that product which is very very unique to your uh, place 
pepper happens to be one of that. And despite international demand, somehow the export is remaining low. So NIF and other agencies you know, from India, from other uh, countries are identifying and putting in a lot of energy into ASEAN countries so that we can you know, work together and bring, bring down that threshold, bring down that, uh, bring into the impetus that we all are asking for. All of us want to grow, but not only in terms of, you know, better mobiles or better cars, but better knowledge also. That is what we are representing now. An insight into how research and innovation is changing the arena of the world. Now, can you see this table, all of you? All of you are awake? See? No, yes, still. Are all of you awake? Okay. So, the patents that were filed over, see, it's, it's a beautiful data. If you would see, Brunei, they, see how they have increased from 2005 to 2014. While this was per billion population data that I'm giving over, this was again in 2016, it has been some time that this data was given over. They've increased from 5.53 to 88.65. See how gradual they have been. Singapore. Maximum number of patents being filed over, 609. Very, this is a beautiful indicator of how you're converting whatever you're doing research in into something that you can, you know, cash upon. That has been materialized, that the world knows you for, and the world has to come to you for. The minute you have filed a patent, the world would go nowhere, but it has to call, land onto your feet to get more of information onto it or to even use it. Same way if you would see Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, they're doing pretty well. You know, Thailand also has been gradually increasing, Indonesia has been increasing. Now can you see Republic of Korea? They've got the highest patents. Why do you think they have the highest patents? Girls? Where do you think they, have, they might be having the maximum patents from? What is Korea famous for? Anybody? No, nobody. Cosmetics. You know, skin-based cosmetics. That is what they are famous for. So you know what they have done? They have used their traditional knowledge, part of their heritage, to invent new products or for cosmetics which, you know, f are flying all across the world, and they have filed maximum patents from it. Now, this is an indication that your traditional knowledge can be used over to materialize what you want to, to bring in money where you want to. All of you, at the end of the day, want money only? First money, then other things, right? Okay, so this, this factor tells you that if you invest in small amount of energy and brain into filing patents or documenting what you have or what you know, it can take you places. The way it has taken Korea, and Korea is recognized because of its cosmetics products. Not only that, but their patent number, the way they file their patent has also increased drastically. So taking it further, so where are we lacking? We're lacking in innovation, are we? What do you think innovation is? How would you define innovation? I personally feel innovation is anything which is unique, which is something that you're doing new, you know, can be classified as innovation. All of you agree? Can it be classified as innovation? Yes? Yes? Yes. So, uh, some, there are days when your phone doesn't work, your TV set doesn't work. Giving it a nice tap can also be classified as innovation. Can it be classified as innovation? I don't know. Probably it can be. Huh? So please don't innovate it to that an extent. Don't go back home and tell your parents that Diksha told us that you know giving it a nice tap is classified as innovate, innovation and I'm innovating. Drop the phone, drop the TV sets, and there goes the innovation. See, or open it up. 
See, innovation, not only that, that might be the highest form of innovation, so to say, but actually, innovation is discovering anything new, it could, which could be done in mundane task also. Every day that you are doing, anything that you do differently is innovation. However, it will be classified as innovation only and only if you document it. History has known that civilizations have not been recognized. Our own in Indian civilization, started 7,000 years old, 8,000 years civilization, they have not been recognized. Why? Because documentation is lacking. And documentation according to Western philosophy is lacking. So we are not going to fight with Western concept we learn, we would learn to adapt and we would learn to take it in. That is what we want to do. So start documenting. Whenever your professor asks you to, you know, write a paper, whenever your professor recommends you to just write it down, whatever your thought is coming, that is what de documentation is all about. So start documenting whatever you think you're doing new Put it in paper. We've seen, you know, I've shown you early in earlier slide how Korea just by documenting has been able to improve upon their general success level, success in the terms of research. So start documenting and document specifically what your traditional knowledge is. That is the third point. Why is it important? It is important because nowadays the way the patents are coming up in, in all parts of the world, very soon for your own traditional knowledge, if you do not get it patented, you'll have to pay money to get that same thing done over. You'll have to send the money abroad to get that same thing done over. So the sooner you put in the process where you patent whatever your traditional knowledge is, the better it is. You being youngsters, it is very important that you understand that your traditional knowledge should not go out of the country. That is what our asset is. The whole Asia Pacific region runs on traditional knowledge. You know, your, your grandmothers, your grandparents, they come over and tell you things. Naturally, what can be done, done over, that would not be done over by a medication. So don't let it go out of your hand. Quickly get into this whole process before it's too late. And that is what I wanted to assert today to all of you. Now with my story, as I told you, you know, uh, I also felt the same way that uh, what, is, what, is, what is it that they talk? You know, some, that what they talk is something that I am not able to understand at times. So. How did I start my story? I, have you heard of remote sensing in GIS? No. Okay. This is a mechanism, a database which generates a lot of data regarding one specific subject. So I being working in water, I identified areas, I tried to, you know, uh, uh, create a lot of database. I never thought it was something unique that I was doing. But I put in a lot of component, you know, I started doing hazard assessment, I started doing vulnerability mapping. See, these, these beautiful maps that I have prepared. Then I diversified. We've uh, formed a new gel, which is completely organic in nature. And in areas which are not rain fed, you know, which are rain deficient, you can use this hydrogel by keeping it overnight into water. You can throw it into the farm next day and soil will retain moisture for say 10 days. While soil retains moisture only for 3 days, with this hydrogel, it will retain moisture for 10 days. The fertilizer, that will be dissipated for a longer time, less of fertilizers will be used. So this being organic, this hydrogel being organic in nature does not contaminate your soil or water. This is one of uh, the uh, innovation that I've done. Other than that, since radioactivity is becoming a problem with each passing day, 
Uh, my team started working on how to remove radioactivity from water. So we've made one cartridge you know, in, in coherence with the, our defense organization. Uh, are you, all, you, you must be using water purifiers at your home, the RO water purifier. So that cartridge straight away can be put into the water purifiers. And in case of an emergency, a radioactive accident, probably all your water will be purified through this particular membrane. We also tested how RO behaves in uh, general radioactivity and found that radio, uh, RO also behaves very nicely when it you know, comes to removal of radioactivity in small concentration. Uh, two, two more minutes. Oh, yeah. just, just about to finish. So why I gave you an insight into all this? Because as I told you earlier, I was thinking probably my innovations are not worthy enough. Are they, we always keep doubting ourselves, you know, that are we good enough, are we worthy enough? And these small little innovations which I was doing and diversifying and doing good work onto, you know where it took me? You know him? Does any one of you know him? This is, yes, this is our Honorable Prime Minister, the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi. And he was the one who invited me over for all the research that I had done. So see, from a small, not a small, from a humble student like you, who do not talk amongst each other while the other person is blabbering, thank you so much for that, from a humble student like you to this. I'm not saying this is a big achievement, but getting the recognition from the Prime Minister of the country is slightly bigger when you know, are one amongst those 140 crore of people that you have in your country. So that's what I'm trying to tell you again and again. Small changes in your daily life, you know, a little attachment towards your heritage will take you places. Please, please do invest in a lot of time. Do invest in all your energy into being, you know, being proud of your heritage. So are you, are you proud of your heritage? Would you say yes now at least? Okay. And would you invest in more in your heritage? Working on to it? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. With this, I would just finish. Thanks, Satan. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Rudiksha. It was very insightful. Uh, now, I would like to invite Dr. Fiu Fiu Win from Myanmar to share her presentation and experience. Over to you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, no? uh, so, our colleagues are from the EMS and India also. So, congratulations of the, you know, uh, my, uh, the Ministry of Industry, Science, Technology, and Innovation, and then the uh, Department of Science and Technology India so, for the uh, uh, so organizing and uh, hosting of the, this very beautiful, successful events. Uh, so, uh, so, in my case, uh, uh, I, they already introduced them. My name is a PPU Win. I'm in my department, and then I'm not teacher. <laughs> Before <laughs> 20 years ago, I'm a teacher. Now I'm not teacher, so I don't ask the questions to the uh, students. <laughs> uh, the teacher, she is a teacher, sir. So, uh, so my department is uh, mainly focused on the uh, so research and. In research and development uh, based on the demands of the uh, small and medium enterprises and we have a technology transfer and then and then we, uh, we have also some uh, conformity assessment and then our uh, standardization also okay this is uh, my outlines uh, um, uh, we are also mainly focused on the uh, policies uh, so uh, it is a little far from the students, uh, I think so. Uh, so uh, our online is uh, uh, S10 Corporation Congress EMS and uh, uh, India, and then how can we promote the technology transfer between the EMS and uh, India and uh, also, and then 
how to overcome the challenges in the classroom innovations. Uh, I think uh, the, the, the students are already know the innovations. Uh, the teacher already asked her, uh, no? Okay. Uh, how about the grassroots innovations? Uh, this is a bottom-up or top-down approach. Do you know the which one? Top-down or bottom-up? Bottom-up. Oh, very good. Great. So, okay. Uh, so, our Australian Corporation uh, started in India and ASEAN is uh, in 1996. Uh, so this year is, uh, this morning I remember, so 30 years uh, relation between the India and ASEAN. Uh, uh, so, uh, and then the Australian Corporation is uh, focused on the many activities, uh, uh, research training fellowships, uh, uh, research and development collaborations, uh, and then innovation platforms. So now this event is the end of the innovation platforms. And then some partnership development activities. You know? And then we are, they have also some regional cooperation, multilateral cooperation, bilateral cooperation. So also we have. Uh, you can see that this, uh, this Uh, so there is uh, the website there. You can see the ASEAN India Fellowship Program also. You can assess the, this website. And then Myanmar also, they actively uh, participate and you know, uh, collaborate with the India. Uh, we have also three kinds of the uh, cooperation programs. Uh, ASEAN India program also. We have uh, bilateral programs and regional programs also. We have. Uh, this is uh, some of the ASEAN India research and development programs. Uh, uh, so we have uh, under the, you know that we have uh, ASEAN India S&D development fund also. Under the, this uh, development fund, we apply the, uh, our department, Department of Research and Innovation, apply the uh, R&D collaboration programs. And then the, our partner is uh, from the India is the ITM University, and the Indonesia is the Indonesian Institute of Science, and then uh, our departments are. Uh, so uh, we developed the same nanocellulose supported uh, tin outside the uh, tin sulfide uh, nanocomposites for the uh, photocatalytic and uh, energy conversion uh, applications uh, in this case. Uh, uh, so we have uh, the outcomes are two international journals paper and three journals are under the review rings. Uh, our department is uh, concerned with the uh, synthesis of the same nanocellulose. As you know, the nanocellulose. Uh, uh, nanocellulose, uh, uh, this, machine, this photo is the uh, measuring of the scanning electron microscope of this morphology of the nanocellulose. Uh, we discuss uh, with the same uh, Indonesia and uh, India experts. Uh, uh, the next, uh, we are also participating the, uh, you know, participating the Glasgow Innovation Forum. This is uh, the top forum. The first forum is uh, in, in Indonesia, and second is the uh, Philippines, and the top this one, in Cambodia is uh, the top forum. Uh, actually, I participate in the second forum and the, this top forum. Uh, uh, so. Uh, this is also, we have uh, India Myanmar bilateral cooperation. Also, we have uh, uh, this is uh, in the ICT field and in our renewable energy. Uh, so, for the ICT development, uh, we have a partner center for development of advanced computing, CTAC India, and started 2016 till 2024. And then we have our uh, India Myanmar Center for Enhancement of Information Technology Skills Training Center. This training center also offers the six courses and uh, to nearly 3,000 uh, skilled uh, ICD technician already produced. Uh, this is our uh, uh, renewable energy center. We have also uh, MOU with the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy India in 2016 and with the Ministry of Science and Technology from Myanmar. And then we are now, we have our third uh, joint working group committee meeting also online 2021. A second joint working group committee uh, working group meeting uh, was held in uh, Ministry of New and Renewable Energy India. 
Now we are Amoyu with the National Institute of Solar Energy, NISE, for development of the Renewable Energy Training Center, and then uh, Amoyu with the National Institute of Bioenergy, NIBE, two turn waste to energy and cooking, uh, clean cooking project also. Uh, and then Yama is also participating in the uh, regional technology transfer program also. We are a member of the uh, Science and Technology Center for NALI and developing countries. Uh, and then uh, Department of Research and Innovation, DRI also is uh, responsible for the Fouquet Department for the Bainstead Technology Transfer Facility. We already signed the MOU with the Bainstead TTF also. Yeah, as you know, uh, Asia becomes an uh, engine of growth for the global economy, and the ASEAN and India must capitalize on their partnership through enhanced uh, connectivity to reap the most benefits. Uh, so, Myanmar is the land bridge between the ASEAN and uh, India, so, so that it may be a potential player for the future economy and STI development in the regions. Uh, our department also has the same technology transfer accelerator hub uh, to support the same technology uh, consultation and technology to the MSME and private sectors. Uh, so, uh, in the future, I think uh, uh, ASEAN India Technology Transfer Center, because uh, uh, there is a same collaboration program, uh, ASEAN India Innovation Platform, we have. Uh, so, under the, this platform, ASEAN India Technology Transfer uh, is, uh, will be est may be established uh, at the one of the EMS uh, to take the opportunities to capture the competitive advantages are brought by the regional and global market chain. So this uh, technology transfer platform uh, can be create, can create all the data banks to assess the technology development in India and ASEAN countries. Uh, the, the data bank can be assessed, uh, logging assessed, and uh, we can know the uh, so ASEAN member states as well as uh, India, what are the technology demands, uh, what are the technology supplies. Uh, we can match the technology also and that we can bridge the, uh, the technology gap between the inventor and the in industry and man manufacturer and academia of the ASEAN countries as well as India also. Uh, two more minutes. Two minutes, okay. Uh, this is, uh, the, the, uh, this is uh, uh, challenges in the classroom innovations. Uh, uh, so, uh, do you already reply the classroom innovation is the bottom approach? Uh, so that's why uh, classroom innovation converts uh, the ideas uh, uh, so to overcome the same challenges and some demands, uh, some needs. Uh. So uh, the idea and innovations are knowledge rich, uh, but uh, they need, uh, I think so, uh, all of the innovators uh, need uh, some uh, face the same financial challenges, I think so. So, and then the classroom innovators mostly rely on the uh, surrounding environment. Uh, so, some communities are not uh, uh, supporting the same classroom innovators. Uh, so, that's why communication and promotion facility also becomes an uh, issue. Uh, because uh, they have to assess the internet or you know, they need the uh, same uh, communications also. They have become issues. Uh, and then, when they when they you know, create the same uh, design or you know, some uh, testing or developments of the you know, implementation period, uh, they need uh, some technology also. This is also uh, challenges of the classroom innovators. And then the finally, when they have invented uh, some uh, idea or products or process, uh, they need also a protecting of the intellectual property also. Uh, this is a... Uh, Reference from the uh, LSE capstone report to the UNDP. Uh, this is a barrier of the classroom innovations. Uh, you know, all of the students also they are in, they are like, invented their their projects and uh, their enterprises uh, uh, for to the technological in, in, 
economic and social values are, are so bad that they have uh, some uh, barriers uh, to transform the broader enterprises. Also. What we need and uh, what are motivations of the, our glacial innovators. Uh, uh, we need uh, some awareness for rents. Uh, but India is a uh, honeybee network is already popular and they are running them. Uh, and some ASEAN countries, uh, they don't have our uh, glacial innovators uh, and network also. So we need uh, some networks and uh, some uh, awareness forums uh, to enhance the innovative ideas uh, for starting glacial community and mobilizing the academia and the, some students and youth also. And then grants, uh, we need uh, some uh, innovations, uh, uh, grants and financial support also uh, we are required. Uh, some, and then tax incentive, uh, intellectual property right also. Uh, and then some countries, are, I think India is already uh, developed uh, for the innovation, glacial innovation policies. Uh, but uh, in our country, Myanmar, we don't have our uh, glacial innovation policies. Uh, so we have to uh, develop that. We have to set up the, this uh, kind of the policies uh, to promote the uh, so, uh, glacial innovation. Uh, so, and then you know, we need uh, some platforms uh, for the training because uh, when they, uh, they invent uh, some, uh, some ideas or some products, uh, they need uh, some uh, training also. So that's why uh, they, the platform for the uh, training, communication, exchange, and integration to bridge the enterprises and eh? innovative forces also. Uh, what are uh, modifications? Uh, I think uh, this is uh, my proposal uh, for the ASEAN and uh, India for considerations. <laughs> uh, the GI, Glacial Innovator, uh, winners, uh, these four ends, uh, we have to consider for the uh, fellowship or scholarship programs uh, awards by the ASEAN India SD Development Fund and then uh, build the uh, online platform showcase for the products uh, of the GI winner, so, and then telemobility program in India and ASEAN, and then I would like to encourage the women distribution of the SND, STI center, so, so that's why ASEAN, India STI fellowship program for women also. This is uh, my proposal for the ASEAN and India. Uh, this is a just uh, give the information. We have also uh, 26, 27 December, this uh, next, uh, oh, next week, uh, we have also National Youth Performance Showcase. Uh, uh, so this is uh, just a pre-preparation of the students uh, uh, to show that they are innovations and they are uh, performance. Uh, this is uh, from Government Technical Institute, Technological University, and you know, ICT University. Uh, so our minister is encouraged to the students. Uh, this is uh, just give the information for you. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. So now what we'll do is we'll break for 10 minutes, coffee break, and after that we'll have the remaining two panelists deliver a presentation, which will be followed by a discussion. And one challenge of uh, giving all of you a break is the attendance should not come down. So everybody please ensure that you see the end-to-end -end picture so that when you want to use the knowledge that is um, gained from today, it is not half. Let it be full. So please return back in 10 or maximum 50. Right now it is 3.20. Please return by 3.35. Okay. We'll begin at sharp 3.35. And this break is with an expectation that all of you will be back. Thank you.
ហើយក៏បានមានការណែនាំប្រមូលផ្ដុំធ្វើម៉េចឲ្យបានការងារវិទ្យាសាស្ត្រប្រជាជាជាហ្នឹង Starting from scoping interview and uh, general directory level from all the 23, eight key university and the research center, nine private sectors are identified the top priority one and the four subsidiator and three development partner. You talk about science and technology, you really need people with a strong background in science and technology. Based on the need of our country, I think that is very important. We work with all these stakeholders to agree on what challenge and vision to be addressed by the roadmap. We uh, work to get agreement with all stakeholders for the organization and government of the exercise and embed in government relevant policy and research process. ដោយមកនឹងវាសោតសោតស្ដាំប្រាប់ដែលសំខាន់ជាដល់បាល់កិច្ចការអបរំការស្រាយជាតិកិច្ចការនឹងអេកូស៊ីស្ទឹមបាន
การวัดประเทศจีนดังใบเชียนตะดอนเชียประเทศดังมีจำนวนมาชุ่มกำลังขบวนในชั้นนำปีปอนสามสับดังเชียประเทศดังมีจำนวนกำลังขบวนในชั้นนำปีปอนหาสับนี้มันไอจีตัวนาชงไงปีกาอภิวัตรหรือกาปราปราวิเชียสักปัจจัยเชียดังมวินวัตรขนมวิสัยอุตสาหกรรมก็โดยเชียขนมวิสัยแปะปอนเซ็งเซ็งสำหรับกาอภิวัตรเซ็งกิจสังคมหรือบากรรมติเชียนาสมเอาริดทบาลในขังลื้อเอาเมียนกาบุญจุลัยบัญชีราดำใบเอาจีจุนขมายกุญโยดังเรื่องทบาลบังเกิลนั่นเชียร์ไปเชียร์ซ่านั่งเออลองอย่างนั้นไปเชียร์เราเช่นช่างเอาเออราทบิบ้าบังเกิลเชียร์ตู้ซับหมดโตลานขบมกเอาเมียนในขนมปะเต็มไม้เออนาสมตัดรถทบาลช่วยปุ่งรังแป้งแป้งจุ่มนอนกร้อยเอาเมียนจุ่มไหนดังคำจุ่มไหนเออปะใจชีนอยบ้านช้านช่างเอาแข่งรถทบิบ้าก็โดยเชียร์สลายกรุ๊ปกรุ๊ปไทม์ซอฟต์แวร์ต่างอ๊อกเมียนโดยเชียร์มุนตีปิซาวด์อปกรณ์สำหรับปิซาวด์กรุ๊ปกร้อนดำใบเอาซะกดการแต่โจจะปิซาวด์จังเต้เทอร์เอาซะจำนวนคอยคอยนั่นคือกดจังดังจังเรียนภายในวิจัยสายนั่งการแต่คลายเมียนกาดำรังตื้อปีขาดน้อมรบบกระซ่วงกีบิเซฮดอนเตสรอนตรีในลูกบานปลาหลาดตะพิบจำบองเลยการเย็นนี่หนึ่งเรียนการกองตรกปุ๊บปีขาดดักนอมแต่ตัวบนตกยืนบานบังเกิดแผนตีบังหายเพลย์ปีชีสซาปัจจัยปีชีหนึ่งนวินวัฒน์ชนะปีควันสามซับการรีบจอมระเบียบไปแรกสายจีดจีดหรือก็ยืนไอ้หนี้ยีสมัยท่าเจ้าการีบจอมอัดตะพิบปีใสสำหรับการปีวัฒน์สังคมเศรษฐกิจบ่อยยืนนี่เจียวไว้ได้ยืนกระปุ่งเธอคือเชียกับตาจำบัดเอาไว้ได้ยื่นเติร์ดฟื้นตั้งออกนี้เพียงเกิดท่ากรุบกระซ่วงสถาบันเปรียบพอได้ชื่อตัวอ่องสำคัญสำคัญอุปสรรคเฉพาะโดยเชียกระซ่วงสาการเชียร์ซะปัจจัยเชียร์ในเวลาวันกระซ่วงอบรุ่มอยู่ประชาชนไกลากระซ่วงเปรียบพอเซ็งเซ็งยื่นเติร์ดแต่ปุ่งรังให้นั่งปุ่งริบกายโยดังเลือดเชียร์ซะปัจจัยเชียร์ในเวลาวันนี้ดำใบเชียนสำหรับจักรวิสัยบริรัฐบาลกรุงการสำหรับเอปเตเชียนยืนคลายเตจิปเตเตมิจโนลมาชุมกรุ๊ปผู้ในชั้นนำปีปอนสามสับหนึ่งเตจิปเตเตมิจโนลผู้ในชั้นนำปีปอนหาสับนุกสำหรับเดชโชนิโยรันเตบังมีการแนะนำอย่างเชิญเดชตงเตนวิสัยวิเชียสร้างในปีเจกิเชียเฮ้ยกบันมีการแนะนำผมโมดมเทอร์เมกออยบังกาเงียวิเชียสร้างปีเจกิเชียนั้นพอมีกระซูงมุ้ยดักนอมนึ่งสำหรับผมดูจังคือสำหรับบ้านสมัยโยลเคยดอกเด็กเก่งนั่งอ่อยมองกระซูงสะกำในสัพกรรมคือสำคัญคือดำใบเชียดาตูนิตีดักนอมพ้องสำหรับผมดูพ้องยุงเสียเจ็บแฟนตีบางไอ้เซอร์นี่ยังกดนองเยอะขึ้นบางตึ๊กองการตัดวัดแทนการสกามเพียบตามกระซูง Starting from scoping interview and uh, general directorate level from all the twenty three, eight key university and the research center, nine private sectors are identified the top priority one, and the four subdirector and three development partner. You talk about science and technology, you really need people with a strong background in science and technology. Based on the need of our country. I think that is very important. We work with all these stakeholders to agree on what challenge and vision to be addressed by the roadmap. We uh, work to get agreement with all stakeholders for the organization and governance of the exercise and embed in government relevant policy and safety process. Roadmap is the resource of France. The important thing is that the การออกรุ้งการสายเชื้อเกิดจากการนั้นเอโคสิสต์มบางทียังถ้าเธอรถมาบีเตอร์ทำไปเชื้อโดยท่าเรียบวิสัยมวยสำหรับยังสงการวัดเฮ้ยดอมลุงเตียวเชื้อประเทศสาบานต่อคือพิจารณาเอาที่เรื่องไฟฮะกุ๊กซ้อมอาณาวัดตะบานเชิงเตอร์ตะตามตะกอดซ้อมตะตามแดดเชื้อสุดเลยนี่
to build up uh, this relationship um, stronger and stronger. All right, now um, a little bit about trade and investment. You will see here the blue one we export to India and the, the green one we import from India. First of all, in terms of values, it increased over the years from 2010 until now. Here is the statistics for March first quarter. From 2010 until 2017, you're going to see that we import more than export. But for three years of COVID, we export more than import. And the trend go back again one more time, that is import, export since 2021 until now. In terms of investment, India ranked the 24th out of 140 countries and territories in Vietnam. And we get a billion US dollar investment from Indian businesses. And until now, there's more than 300 projects is ongoing in Vietnam. Look, Vietnam in, in India realized the importance of ICT um, cooperation since the early age. And we have a lot of, um, I mean, several agreements um, sized and implemented. I can, I can tell you, the very first SDI agreement site in 1978 and we renew in 20, uh, 1990, uh, 1996. And based on this, in 1997, we set up a joint uh, committee to manage the SIT between two countries. And thanks to this, we have a lot of act uh, activities here. SIT cooperation between India and Vietnam foster in late 19s until now. And the cooperation, especially in, in uh, HR, I mean human resource, uh, is the top priority uh, for two countries. And uh, normally each year, Indian government offer a lot of um, scholarships for students under ITEC uh, program, CEPEEP, uh, GSC um, program. There are a lot of uh, Vietnamese students coming to India uh, for uh, further education. It doesn't work. Can I, could you click on the next slide for me? Okay, got it. Here, <clears throat> here is some landmark. Hey, look, I get the Prime Minister here. You see? All right, so the, the, the Prime Minister Modi came to visit Vietnam in uh, September 2016 and we signed 13 agreements altogether. And two years later, 2018, our Prime Minister came to visit uh, India and uh, they tried to facilitate the current agreements and Indian Space Research Organization, ISO, uh, uh, ISRO uh, and Ministry of Resources and Environment in Vietnam, they set up a center for national remote sensing, so quite advanced technology. Look, here, three main areas, the three main areas of the corporation, nanotechnology application, in producing materials and military equipment and healthcare and agriculture, IT, telecommunication, chemistry, and biotechnology in models of biology in agriculture, healthcare, environment service, and uh, oceanography uh, in earthquake and, and tsunami alert. And if you look at this line, 2010 backward, we focus mainly on agriculture area. But from here forward, we still keep the tradi traditional cooperation, mean agricultural area, but then we focus more on advanced technology like renewable energy, high tech, space tech. Right. My first part done. Two more minutes. Oh, really? <laughs> now, the second part uh, Vietnam innovation system. 
um, are going to skip this one to complicate it. And here, um, you can see the Vietnam Innovation Ecosystem. Um, here, uh, I mean, my picture is much better than this one. Do you see? Uh, we have the capital one, um, support service, um, network, and talent. You can see different guys in here, um, but I, I think it's the, uh, the picture is not that good. And here, um, in Vietnam, we have um, different programs, different organizations in charge different programs. And here is different scopes and the key events of the program. Just one example. Ministry of Planning and Investment. No, look. Ministry of Science and Technology. They have the program named ISEV, Vietnam Startup Entrepreneurship Initiative. Um, what is this? It's Startup and Entrepreneurship Vietnam. And uh, they have a tech fest. Very, very big event thousand people come and share the ideas and look look at the tech, the, um, tech investment in Vietnam um, you see the trend is uh, increasing dramatically except that year we have a COVID-19 then it's not that good here is the um, some newly established enterprise last year compared to 2020 and here the first ninth month ninth month and ninth month and we got a very high uh, for the first nine months of 2020 and here is the total register uh, capital i need to run very fast otherwise they... um well look here there are three features for vietnam um, innovation uh, system first of all Global Innovation Index. The latest ranking of G, I mean Global Innovation Index of 2020, Vietnam ranked the 24th, 28th, down four places. And here's the interesting point. Losing the top position of low middle income countries to India. Ha ha. You see? <laughs> nice fact, huh? Uh, the second one, Vietnam capital firms actively investing into technology startup. Uh, the last one, government is gradually completing and consolidating the policy system offering support program to promote Vietnam innovation ecosystem. Um, here's some indicator. Ranking in global startup ecosystem, 54 out of 100. Ranking in the Global Innovation Index, 48 out of 132. Nearly 500 million US dollar, the total venture capital investment. For the first, uh, I mean for the nine months, the first nine months of 2020. Uh, for the first nine months of 2022, numbers of deal, 94, one, uh, 94 deals. Um, startup in operation, 3,800. We have a three unicorn, VNG, VN Life, and Momo. Uh, I mean, all for the first nine months, right? And here, the unicorn, VNG, game platform, fintech, cloud computing, VN Pay, payment and uh, multi channel e commerce, and Momo, uh, e wallet. And here, love, I love this one, Sunicon. Sunicorn mean they're going to be a unicorn soon. Okay, okay. And here it is. Uh, um, yeah. TK and GHN or in uh, just kind of um, uh, delivery uh, platform. Yeah. Then, um, all right. So how to, uh, how to make the startup work in Vietnam? Uh, how to shorten the time from idea to commercialization, lean startup approach, design thinking, how innovation could be sustained and secure the market demands, customer-centric, integrated strategic partnership, open innovation, and how innovators access the market information, rapid prototyping, corporate innovation is some idea that we, uh, we uh, summarize um, when we work with the firm. Um, here is some, some 
kind of um, the linkages between universities and, and, and uh, industry. And you can see some name in there. Uh, my university is in here. You see? Okay. And uh, we have this one. It's an incubation space. We uh, play a key role in, in setting up the, um, I mean, offering service for, for a startup. Here, some successful startup from our university. And uh, just a quote, you can connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them, uh, them looking backward. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. And today is a nice dot. And hopefully this dot connects us to a brighter future. That's all for me for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, now I would like to invite Dr. Tri from Cambodia for his talk. Thank you, Mr. MC, and very good afternoon, uh, and welcome again to Cambodia of our delegate from ASEAN and also from India. Uh, very good afternoon, and I have a great honor to share on uh, STI corporate, uh, corporation aspect in Cambodia, but I will uh, raise mostly not focus on STI for startup, but it's the overall frame uh, in the context of Cambodia, and uh, I will also share uh, what is grassroots, same grassroots uh, definition we would define differently from one to another country. However, I will raise a very general one and what is Cambodia focused on and what is uh, uh, policy will be uh, shared in the, uh, session three, but this I will focus on the aspect on STI cooperation. Actually, uh, the new idea can immerse everywhere. As, as we know the new idea, either uh, when the present or solution, either insufficient or completely absent. So to respond to the community, of course, uh, innovation happened to solve the problem. And uh, unaffordable, uh, for example, some solution are, are existing, but it's too expensive in some aspect. So we have to create a new one to replace it and uh, inaccessible or not commercialized. Some uh, great idea is not commercialized yet. And innovation uh, from grassroots emerged in different way. Uh, it, it has mentioned three way also in the same case in India that I work uh, a lot on grassroots and to promote grassroots. Uh, spontaneous innovation, so normally the formal research development or uh, market or public policy could not uh, reach to the grassroots level. So uh, the spontaneous innovation, they create uh, themselves uh, of the new idea. Induced innovation, of course, uh, this is a very good idea that uh, we need to induce community or individual to come up with a solution or certain problem uh, through organizing the challenge, for example. Also, a co-creation, uh, it is a network between uh, different university, between uh, different ASEAN member states to uh, work together. So, uh, campaign, it is new idea will happen uh, during that such event. And uh, how to uh, cooperate, of course, uh, if we want to know how to cooperate, we need to define well what is the definition of grassroots. So, uh, I just uh, mentioned a little bit here, uh, we have different uh, innovation type, but uh, we define grassroots uh, by uh, publication for last 10 years already. Innovation made by private enterprise, or innovation made by individual, or made by private research institution will define as grassroots innovation. However, uh, when the uh, national innovation made by uh, scientific research institute or university or made by the state-owned enterprise, uh, they define as government tall innovation. Of course, in the government policy, we support uh, innovation made by uh, private enterprise, uh, but we, have, we see less visibility on support the, uh, of individual force. Uh, 
So why technology transfer? Of course, an uh, innovator, uh, sometimes they don't want to be a businessman, they don't want to be entrepreneurs. Since an uh, innovator, they, they may have some uh, idea or some mindset very particular. So of course, an uh, uh, entrepreneur, want to be an entrepreneur, many things we need to take into account. So as innovator, do not need to be a, a, a future entrepreneur. So, so they just keep focus on their research, focus on their innovation idea. So when entrepreneur enters in their idea, of course, is uh, the time when technology transfer is required. So we transfer from uh, uh, innovator to entrepreneur. So technology can be licensed and then technology can be licensed. And how to transfer, what is the payment of innovator? This is all the point that we need to work together on us. Actually, in the context of Cambodia, uh, we are now in the drafting law on uh, technology transfer. So law on technology transfer has been drafted. And uh, we also take into account how to encourage all individual folks or uh, research institution to encourage them to transfer. Of course, uh, technology transfer, uh, two big model, it will be a horizontal technology transfer and vertical transfer. Of course, in horizontal, in the short and medium term, it's very good uh, model that we need to focus on horizontal one from one private sector to another. And vertical, it will be focused on as well a uh, patent from the uh, research institution until uh, commercialization. So uh, the next slide uh, on the aspect on uh, science and technology cooperation, of course, through ASEAN channel, we are one from ASEAN member state. Uh, all our vision is one ASEAN. So in the context of science, technology, innovation, uh, we have ASEAN plan accent on science, technology, innovation uh, that we will implement uh, until 2025. And now we are drafting. Uh, we are starting to draft uh, ASEAN uh, Apacity 26 to 2035, of course, to support science, technology, and of course, uh, cooperation among ASEAN member states and also with uh, our dialogue partner that we have. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, is one of the, our active uh, dialogue partner to support in science technology. Besides, what are the funds that are uh, existing uh, in ASEAN is uh, ASEAN Science Technology Innovation Fund. So to promote grassroots innovation, of course, uh, what are the cooperation that we need to support on behalf of one ASEAN member state and on behalf of one organization? Of course, we need to support uh, and to promote the challenge around the summer school, creativity, a workshop, volunteer, or some teaching network, uh, et cetera. Or fellowship that uh, we need to support all such activity. In the context of Cambodia, uh, some policy has been established to support uh, grassroots. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, one village, one product policy uh, in 20 uh, and in 2000, uh, it's quite up 22 years ago. Uh, this to promote the grassroots level to innovate new product to represent uh, their own uh, village. What are the new product uh, from this? Innovation mindset, of course, uh, we need to build innovation mindset. So uh, Technovation Cambodia uh, started uh, last eight year, uh, last six year, also uh, to promote the innovation mindset. Besides this, uh, we have a new ministry that created to promote our science technology innovation that just established last two years. Of course, a science technology innovation uh, ecosystem has been built in last uh, uh, six, eight years, but uh, the new ministry that handle uh, such activity just created last two years. Uh, for the challenge, of course, uh, we have uh, several models, but at, at our currently we focus on a triple helix model that uh, we need to link up between academy, industry, and government, and uh, how to support them. For example, I previously as a lecturer and also a deputy director of research and innovation center of this university. 
uh, I faced the challenge that how we can protect what a researcher could uh, uh, find out and what how to link industry to university, how to get industry to involve and work together university, and what government should support. So all of these are the challenge that we need to strengthen, that we need to work together, what uh, to discuss on, on the table together, and government will need to prepare and uh, make a good policy to support uh, private sectors and also university. And when we have a common objective, of course, we could uh, go far and uh, go straight to the right point. Uh, for the challenge on grassroots, of course, uh, grassroots is uh, to solve the local and specify yet widely applicable that we found and uh, appropriate to yet transforming uh, situation, project-based solution, yet seeking structure uh, change, lack available model uh, for the transfer of technology. Of course, uh, in Cambodia, we do not have uh, the network among grassroots innovation. Yet, uh, for example, in India, the whole giant that is a very big network to support in all aspects uh, that all grassroots innovators need linked to the government as well. Uh, so, uh, two more minutes. Uh, thank you. I will finish in two slides. <laughs> uh, after establishing a new ministry, uh, Within two years, within two years, a uh, document here uh, uh, published that uh, we, after we got a uh, policy uh, on science, technology, innovation 2030, uh, we prepared very quickly uh, in early 2021 of Cambodia Science Technology Roadmap. So all activity, all milestone, all uh, objective that we need to conduct in uh, that roadmap uh, in all aspects of science, technology, innovation. And then, of course, uh, new ministry created uh, to build a good ecosystem. We need to know uh, where we are. So the landscaping of science, technology, innovation has been conducted with the support of UNESCO. And we also provide a, a good recommendation what are the legal uh, document that we need to establish, what are the cooperation aspects that we need to work in on behalf of government with our uh, uh, development partner and also uh, other country in the world. Technology need assessment, of course. Uh, technology need assessment, uh, we will need to update and uh, several years later, but in current context, we have already defined what are technology that require in our context. Uh, education technology roadmap, of course, uh, Cambodia, we need to build a uh, human capital, not only human resource, so health technology need to integrate it in uh, our main agenda. Uh, we have also uh, education technology, health technology, and also our grid technology roadmap. And within this year, we will finish other three technology roadmap, like uh, energy technology roadmap, tourism technology roadmap, and digital technology roadmap. Uh, this is one of our main agenda, one of uh, uh, the pillar mentioned in our Cambodia STI roadmap is a collaboration. Of course, uh, we have a, a little bit different between collaboration and uh, cooperation. In this aspect, we focus on collaboration to discuss together. Uh, in this pillar, uh, what are our main uh, uh, activity we need to conduct is to making university and research institution more open to private sector as the Paul Elick model uh, we need to build. Uh, rolling out the incubation and also to support startup and SME on scaling up. Uh, piloting technology innovation and cluster uh, to generate knowledge transfer between large firm, SME, and higher education as well. So this urge and technology transfer, both a horizontal and vertical technology transfer. So what is the mandate? Our CNM from our General Department of Science, Technology, and Innovation is a new General Department that established uh, along with a uh, very new Ministry of Industry, Science, Technology created last two years. So uh, Science, Technology, Cooperation that we need to handle is to establish network and linkage to promote research and development. Uh, to collaborate with uh, relevant stakeholders uh, to push 
uh, all aspects in collaboration to support and strengthening science technology innovation. Uh, need to work together with or and organizing collaboration on science technology, uh, including open innovation, and also negotiating, concluding, and uh, implementing science technology agreement, and also build and connect to uh, the world on the aspect of science technology. Also uh, providing uh, intervention on science technology aspect and uh, national and international forum. This is uh, just a brief uh, mandate of uh, our activity on science technology cooperation. So uh, I will stop my talk now. Thank you so much. I think it will be uh, many other questions uh, related to uh, science technology and Western aspect in Cambodia. Thank you so much. <coughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Trai. So now for the discussion, we will shorten the discussion because we have very little time remaining now. So I will try to maximize the output from the remaining 10, 15 minutes that we have so that even though we have not started on time, but let's conclude on time. <laughs> so that's the idea. So my first question is for Deeksha. When you met the Prime Minister, what did you say to him and what did he say to you? He has said to you. And for the other three, since you, you may not have met your prime minister or presidents yet, given a chance that you will meet him or her, what is that, you are, what is that one thing that you are going to tell him or her? So in the meantime, it is easy for her because she has already said that. But for you, because it is a future event, so you can think in the meantime. So they are all waiting to hear from Diksha. What, did you, what have you said to him? and what he has said to you. Uh, actually, I made a very brief presentation to him. And uh, while I was uh, making that presentation, so he has learned so much over the years that uh, uh, he, you know, sort of was jumping. It, okay, flip through, <laughs> go to next, go to next. And um, when he slip, uh, flipped through five to seven uh, slides of mine, I just stood there. I said, do I have to flip only or do, should I tell you something? So probably he, start, he started laughing. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that at the end of the day, it is uh, just uh, two people interacting. You know, uh, If you have that mindset wherein you are ready to receive the new ideas and innovations that are being done over, uh, uh, you're ready to receive them, then I think whether you're the prime minister or a general uh, student, it, it doesn't matter. So, uh, yes, but I was awestruck because uh, I really, all my life, uh, I wanted to meet him. Uh, that, that also, I would uh, uh, tell you of one small incident that happened. Uh, when he was elected, uh, I had uh, read so much about him, about the work that he had done, that somewhere deep in, he had been to U.S., and I saw him uh, shaking hand with the one person in US. So while he was shaking hand, it just crossed my mind. I'm talking of what you give to the universe, the universe gives you back. So that just thought and that wish that you know someday I should be able to shake hands with him. It would be lovely to meet him. That came back in this form. So uh, all of you, please. Uh, never underestimate your hopes and uh, wishes. That is, that is what I'm trying to say. Great. So now, ma'am, you have to tell when you will meet, what is that you are going to say? Yes. Yeah, I would like to highlight the, uh, the emerging technology in the students uh, because uh, this is a glacial forens. Uh, so I think uh, uh, I saw the same e service. 83% uh, of the 12 to 7, 70 years old students, uh, they have 83% uh, of the, these students uh, have smartphones. Uh, 
So that's why most of the students uh, in the college, uh, uh, they are uh, increasingly they're removing the uh, paper uh, book. Uh, so it's, and then paper book uh, towards the uh, laptop and some uh, so computer computers also. So, so the, 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 uh, this uh, digitalization era, so I think that most of the students are very interested in the IoT device. Okay. So I think that these students in, the, in this room also, they have also <coughs> all of the students that have their phones. So they want to use the, the, their smartphone IoT device for some automations and some, uh, so they are also IoT device based some inventions. Are. So that's why when I, say, when I saw the, all of the students from the, in my country also, because uh, we have a uh, uh, 33 technological university and 20 uh, ICT universities, we have also uh, so, um, Myanmar, India, Information Technology Universities. Uh, this is a, uh, a friendship project uh, supported by the India government. Uh, so this uh, university students also, they are interested in the IoT device space. Uh, technologies. Uh, this is emerging technology in our countries. And then some industry also, they are want to use the IoT based automation systems uh, because uh, they can reduce the same uh, so cost, they can reduce the cost for operation as well as uh, they can reduce the energy source. So that's why. Uh, so I think uh, these of the, st the students also, they are interested in the IoT base. Uh, so we can see that our okay. exception also. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So now, what would you say to your leader? Um, wow, hi. Um, I believe that I have, um, if, I, if I saw my Prime Minister, let's say, uh, what I can say, say um, two messages. The first one, empower and motivate local governments. Why say so? Um, innovation. It's a, it's a fancy word for all the people, but the main focus is just at the gover governmental level, ministry and university and those kind of things. But if we run down to um, province level, probably it's, it's a little bit cooler. So here, hot, down here, cold. Actually, to have a, a good system, we need to have a top-down and bottom-up. And we need the local government of different provinces. They need to be more active in, in, in uh, facilitating and, and, and fostering ecosystems. The second message, um, they should have a kind of a division to taking care of grassroots innovation. So government probably, they just focus on uh, governmental um, innovation, just like uh, Mr. Uh, mentioned. And we need to have some kind of a division, taking care of um, an officers and grassroots um, innovation, because that is the basic, that is the uh, probably, uh, I, I mean, uh, mobilize the resources of the entire country for the development of the society. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I think it is a good opportunity to deliver what I want to uh, talk with uh, our Prime Minister, if I have a chance. Uh, I, I will say only one thing, uh, since we call uh, Somdak Prime Minister, so Somdak, I would like to request that science, technology, innovation is very important. Uh, experience in the world uh, to live of the country. It will be science, technology, innovation, of course. In advanced country, they will uh, depend on science, technology, and innovation. So that please invest more on science, technology, innovation. That uh, currently, uh, of course, uh, we see the experience that some country in ASEAN have stuck on the middle income trap. Cambodia will go soon to middle income trap. So uh, only science, technology, innovation that integrate to industrial policy that could live from that. Of course, I think uh, some that he has um, many talented people that already uh, told him and discussed about that already. But if I meet him again, I will just repeat the same message and mention that, of course, uh, 
with the high wisdom of Song Dak has already created new ministry with a very great leadership of our current uh, minister that could in charge very well and supervise very well new team, one created new ministry, new team uh, from different uh, sector, from university, from uh, private sector, work together at ministry, even new environment, but our current minister could manage well and produce a quite significant output. So I will uh, just repeat again and again so that please invest more on science, technology, innovation. As a uh, middle income country, if we say, uh, approximately 173 something as average that invest on uh, research and development. Cambodia is the report uh, by uh, World Bank uh, 2018 only approximately 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So we need to invest more on research and development. Without investment, we could not uh, get uh, something uh, significant on science, technology, innovation. So this is uh, what I, if I have chance to talk with uh, some like Prime Minister. Great. Thank you so much. In fact, one common theme in all the four responses is, I think you're, all of you are trying to say, if you want to get re-elected, focus on science. So I think that's the message that I've put together from all the four responses. My next question, because we are short of time, what is the best advice all of you individually have ever received? Let everybody know the best advice that you have received or you have perceived. Not necessarily you have met somebody and then it is given. You would be watching YouTube and you realize that, oh yeah, this is the best advice I have ever received. So what is that one best advice that you want to share with the audience today? And giving you a few seconds to think, let me share with you the best advice which I have received. Yes, yes. No, so that he, he, because you know this question was in my mind, so I am prepared. So I thought, let me give you 30 seconds to think about uh, about the best advice. And the best advice I received was, whatever you are doing, be excellent at it. Not necessarily what you are doing is relevant to the people who are watching, but at least they will get a message that you can do anything perfectly with excellence. So I think whatever you are doing, even though it's a menial job or it's a very high uh, effort oriented job, be at the best, be at your best because somebody is watching you and that is going to be creating more opportunities for you in future. Now let's be begin with yes uh, thank you so much to give me the floor first actually uh, my main message would be uh, keep on the topic on uh, cooperation of course a uh, cooperation is not only for uh, to, to serve for our common goal. So from Cambodia, our uh, perspective, from different uh, ASEAN member state, uh, member perspective, need to make for common goal, still keep on science, technology, innovation, to serve for human life, human being, well-being, and all innovation are to support our better life together. So still keep on science, technology, innovation, and work together to make sure that science, technology, and innovation make our life better. Thank, Thank you so much. Um, my advice is for young people from that road backward. Uh, not for you. <laughs> oh, wow. Try to break the glass ceiling. Here is the ceiling made by glass. You couldn't see it, but you couldn't go above it because it's a ceiling. You need to break it. How to break it? Please, dare to do something different. So when you are students at this prestigious university, um, wow, sometimes your performance is not as good as expected. No problem. Focusing on studying, but at the same time, joining other clubs, other extracurriculums, try to, um, try to be a kind of a dynamic person. With that value, after graduation, you, you're going to be, be able to break the glass ceiling, and you uh, uh, could be a critical part of the innovation system of Cambodia. Thank you. Thank you. So, 
I would like to say that uh, ASEAN and India started the ASEAN cooperation in 1996. Uh, I wish uh, that these corporations uh, will be more stronger and deeper than the, in the ASEAN corporations. And then I would like to encourage uh, all of the students uh, to the, uh, so their uh, invention and creation and creative thinking others do you have? Uh, if you have uh, creative thinking uh, for overcome the same challenges and same, uh, same uh, problems uh, you can do that. Uh, so you, are, you, have, you have to use the, your mind and uh, your creative thinking to, to uh, try your best. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, well, I, I am always on the other side of uh, uh, the table. I get advices rather than give advice. I get advice every day regarding how to dress up, how to speak. You know, my daughter says I'm too enthusiastic. My husband says I'm too talkative. So I get advice, but thank you so much for letting me give them an advice. See, the only advice that I would give you is that it's very important how you speak to yourself. I personally feel uh, 90% of the times, it's not the world that puts us down. It is we ourselves who underestimate ourselves. So the language with which you speak to yourself is what matters the most. Make sure you don't let yourself down. Not in your thoughts, not in your words. Always tell yourself that you're the best, and I'm sure you shall be the best. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's really interesting and what I think one of the common themes in all these advices is that we have to be very humble. I think if we are humble, because that I could sense from the honesty with lot of with all of you were exhibiting, so I think that's common theme across all the advices is like be humble, humility is always important because if you are humble, then people won't hesitate in reaching out to you whether they are asking you a question or whether you are asking them a question. So a common message is like, be humble, that will take you too far. And my last question, and just I want one sentence. Suppose I am from a country who is willing to invest in India, in Myanmar, in Vietnam, and Cambodia, and you have to make a pitch, like come to my country. What is that one sentence, one pitch, which you will make for your country and attract investment, attract innovators from other countries to come to your country. You've made it into a GK round now. <laughs> you know, this has become... Uh, <laughs> again, we're starting from there, are we? <laughs> Volunteers. <laughs> Why should I come to Vietnam? Why should I come to Myanmar? Why should I come to India? And why should I come to Cambodia? One sentence, one word that attracts people from other parts of the world to your countries. Uh, India being uh, thousands of years old, the civilization being that old, we know sustainability to the core, shall be my sentence. Great, great. Over to you, ma'am. Sustainability from India, but from Myanmar. Friendship and consultology of the Myanmar. Friendship. OK, great. Of course, a great message. My answer is, I don't know. <laughs> so probably, probably, um, nothing is impossible. Yeah, nothing, nothing is impossible. Great. And over to you, Dr. Try. Actually, it's to short sentence or a uh, very general one. Actually, uh, peace in Cambodia. A political stability in Cambodia will bring you a bright future of the company. So. Great. So that's a, that's a very interesting part of this entire session. And I think the message is we have to think cross-border. So all of you have given a reason why it should be cross-border. 
majority of us are cross border today we are from another country majority of the audience is from another country so i think that's the message and i think with this we conclude the session now and thank you for being a very wonderful audience and sorry for not allowing you to ask a question uh, i hope the questions that were asked were very much your thoughts your questions and with this we conclude the session and over to the uh, organizers now uh, thank you very much uh, on behalf of our uh, participant uh, we could not thank enough to our uh, guest speaker and also the moderator for the perfect moderation of the session and uh, before closing may i invite dr zurina head of science and technology division at asian secretariat uh, to please hand the gift to our panelists so um Um, so I think first maybe to the moderator, to uh, Mr. <laughs> Tasha Gatt. You did a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Ms. Uh, Deksha. Thank you. Third one to Dr. Pupu Win from Yama. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the fourth one, one is to Dr. 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 Pung, Lai, Pung Thai Le from Vietnam. Thank you. And last one to Dr. Dr. Tree from Cambodia. Last but not least, can we have one photo session together, uh, Asian Secretariat, uh, representative of Asian Secretariat with our moderator and the uh, honor guest speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, before closing, on behalf of the organizer, I would like to show our appreciation to our honored guest, distinguished speaker, ladies and gentlemen, and all the audience for spending your valuable time participating in this event. And gently remind that tomorrow we will continue our session two uh, under the theme of policy and regulation ecosystem of grassroots innovation in Asian member state and India community. Um, may I announce the closing of today's session? Thank you very much.